cabinet making tends to be steeped in tradition and still largely relies on carcass jointing conventions that are over a hundred years old. Now I should know as I trained in traditional cabinet making techniques at Shoreditch College in the 1960s. But what is tradition if it does not adapt to change? And the power tool revolution since the 70s surely has its impact on the way things are made. Most notably, the portable router is not just a grooving tool, but in my 1989 book, I stated that whilst it's very good at copying the past, its true worth is in shaping the future. That was 25 years ago. Yet the router and its evolution into CNC machining still, by and large, creates furniture that employs traditional panelled frame and carcass constructions, certainly in appearance. Take motorcycle design, for instance. New technologies using lightweight composite materials show an evolution in structural design. The form follows the function, and new electric bikes reflect the technology. Well, designing to me is about asking questions after emptying the mind of preconceptions. Wood is fantastically versatile. Now take the dead space of a living room corner. It lends itself to a corner cabinet. And this example of my pyramid drinks cabinet starts essentially with function. How can I store and access a reasonable number of bottles and glasses? Let's say 12 of each. So the design falls into place after a few more questions are asked and observations made such as handles and hinges often let a cabinet down so how can I avoid using them? In the back of my mind always is how can I make it? How can I make it easily and without wasting too much material? And part of my influence comes from working in a furniture factory and studying production rationale which means efficiency. So this cabinet was actually made from a single two inch thick board of maple. I cut thick veneers with my bandsaw and then created panels for the two sides and front. Now the front panel is the interesting bit which I'm showing here as a radical departure from cabinet construction. It could not have been made without the router. So this is what I mean about the router shaping the future and I designed this 35 years ago. This particular one was made in 2002. A tiny two millimeter cutter depicts the doors and opening flap and is accomplished using the template and batten routing methods. The cut is only three millimeter deep and serves to guide a jigsaw set up with a metal cutting blade, uh, the thinnest blade you can get. Solid maple lippings are trenched into the door edges and mitered. All these operations are done with the router. What is accomplished is perfectly matching grain and precise alignment of doors. Each door is radius slightly and the 3mm thick veneer therefore gives a solid plank look. The shelves are routed in individually and this progressive constructional strategy makes gluing up easier as it's done in several stages. Uh, please check out my digital touchscreen jukebox uh, made in 2005 which is another example of unconventional construction strategies using that incredible tool. Now what's it called? Oh yes, a router.